morning. Once again, we welcome you to the Door of Hope telecast. Glad that you've tuned in. And this is a, such a special day for our country as we celebrate the 4th of July, the, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And But yet when our forefathers signed that, they realized they were not making themselves independent from God, but depended on God. And I pray that our nation will return uh, to that same status. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Father, for all these years that you've allowed America to be blessed and, Father, to be free. Lord, so many are trying to uh, be independent from you, and I pray that our nation would come back to you, that they would call upon your name and put you first in their lives, and, Lord, that you'd make America uh, what it used to be as a Christian nation. I pray for those who are sick and afflicted that you touch their bodies, bring healing to them. I pray, Father, for those that are uh, lost, that they'd see their need of a Savior and be born again today. We pray in thy name. Amen. We're going to go to another song at this time. This one by Brother Bob Smith entitled, Who Am I? When I think of how he came so far from glory came and dwelled among the lowly such as i to suffer shame and such disgrace on mount calvary take my place then i ask myself this question who am i who am i that a king would bleed and die for who am i that he would pray not my will thine for the answer i may never know why he ever loved me so that to an old rugged cross he would go for who am i when i'm reminded of his words i'll leave thee never just be true and i'll give to you alive forever and forever i don't know what i could have done to deserve god's only son fight my battles till they're won for who am i who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray, not my will thine for? The answer I may never know. Why he ever loved me so That to an old rugged cross He would go For who am I? Amen. Thank you, Brother Bob, for that good song. And certainly what a question that song asks That the Lord would love us. Let me take time to say thank you to you that have a part in this ministry, of us reaching out week after week. All we ever ask you to do is pray for us, but some do send a gift, and we want you to know we appreciate both your prayers and your gifts, and uh, ask you to just pray that God will use this ministry to reach the lost, not just here locally, but around the world. 
Let me invite you to come and be with us now in our services here at the City Mission Church. We're located at 710 North 5th Street in Ironton, Ohio. We have Sunday school at 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Then we come back at 7 o'clock for an old-fashioned worship service. Tuesday nights, our prayer, praise, preaching, or teaching service at 7. And so is our young people's service Tuesday night at 7. And we do run some vehicles here in the local area. If you need a ride, feel free to give us a call at 740-532-5041. And we'd be happy to send someone by to pick you up, take you home after church. Now let me also make one special announcement next Sunday night at 7 o'clock on the 11th, uh, Brother J.R. Adkins will be here to sing. So uh, mark that down, and if at all possible, come and be with us. He's always a blessing when he's here. Now we're going to go to the message we began on the broadcast last week, entitled, Wait on the Lord. They had a business meeting. They had prayer meeting. But they stayed there, 120 people up there. There was Jesus' brothers. It's a last mention of his mother in Scripture. There are the disciples and others who have followed Christ, and they're there waiting for the promise that the Comforter, the Holy Ghost was going to come. That was the promise. Wait for the power from on high. Sometimes we move and we don't have the power of God to move. And we need to wait. One of the old preachers years ago, I, I, I wish I'd remember all these names sometimes. They said he stood up in his pulpit one time and he said, the Spirit of God has not come and I'm going to wait till he comes. And he and the congregation waited three hours before he felt the power of heaven. But they said the glory came down. You wouldn't get people to wait three hours today. Amen. They got too much to go home and do. But man, they waited. What a witness. They waited for the promise which was that the Holy Ghost would come and would empower them and lead them and guide them and remind them of the things that Jesus taught and the things they'd learned in their youth and in the worship at home and in the temple and so forth. And so he said, you just wait for the power to come. And boy, when the power came, they didn't need the upper room anymore. They needed more room. Amen. So we need to wait for God's promises. He's promised us never to leave us and never forsake us. He's promised us that He'd go with us through all of our trials. Amen. We need to wait on God for what God has called you to do. God has a job for each of us. He certainly does. In Romans 12, 7, He said, Or ministry... Let us wait on our ministering, or he that teaches on teaching. Our service to God should come before the service to ourselves. Amen. We, uh, and what God has called us to do, we should wait on it first. We ought to be faithful to God. We ought to put him first in our life. And when we do, everything else works out better. Amen. Amen. So Paul's saying to this group, he said, whatever God's called you to do, just wait on that which he has called you to do and do it with all your heart. Amen. We need dedicated people. That's what he's saying. Amen. Simeon waited for God's consolation. In Luke chapter 2, verse 25, he said, and behold, and there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Now, you know the story if you've read the Bible very much. It's around the Christmas story where they've taken Jesus up to have him circumcised and, and offer offerings up and so forth. They've done all this, and there's an old man in the temple there that seems to stay around the temple. And he said... Uh, He'd been promised from God he wouldn't die till he saw Jesus. Amen. And that day he came in and he recognized who it was. It wasn't a halo above his head. It was the impression of the Holy Spirit. And he got excited. Listen to what he went on to say beginning at verse 29. He said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, 
a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Said he's not just the Savior of the Jews, he's the Savior of the world. He is God's promised seed. Now, Lord, I can live here. I've seen him. I've held him in my hands. Oh, my. What a privilege that had to be that day to hold the baby Jesus. But then I ask you, and we look at how are we to wait on the Lord? How do we wait? I think first of all, we can wait upon Him quietly and with hope. In Jeremiah's book of Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 26, he said, It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes we just need to be quiet. Peter learned that, didn't he? Uh, up there on the Mount of Transfiguration, God in a polite way done it. But old Peter's running off at the mouth like he likes to do. Lord, shall we build three tabernacles here, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah? And they entered into a cloud, and the cloud said, This my beloved son, hear him. Translated in today's English, shut up and listen. Yeah. That's what he was saying. We need to listen. We need to hope. And we have a hope which is as an anchor that's sure and steadfast. We have a hope today that is beyond a wishful hope. We have the assurance hope. Uh, and he said to quietly wait for God's deliverance, for God to work. We just let him work. I think we ought to wait on the Lord with anticipation. Bible said in Luke chapter 12 and verse 36, And ye yourselves liken the men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. When the rich would get married, they'd take long honeymoons. And you didn't know when they was coming back. They would, they would be gone sometimes, a month, two months. Of course, they... They had plenty of money. But when they came home, they expected things to be in order. And they expected somebody to open the door for them, to be looking for their arrival. They may get in late and have a long night, and they're looking for someone that will be there to take the luggage and take it to the rooms and, and to put up the horses or whatever and, and, and open the door to them. I ask you the question tonight, how eager are you for Christ to return? How eager are we for the Lord to come? He said we ought to be anticipating, we ought to be looking, we ought to be ready as if He is coming today because we don't know when He's coming. Amen. We ought to be looking and working and ready day and night because when you read Scripture, you know He's going to come at all those times. The world is on different time zones. Right now in Hawaii, it's about 10 minutes till 2, if I'm right. So it's daylight there. Australia is, what, about 14 hours ahead of us? So it's tomorrow over there. You know, it's 10 o'clock in the morning almost. So he could come at morning, evening, or at noon. Or should we say he will come evening, morning, or noon? <laughs> We just don't know what time zone we're going to be in. Amen. So we need to be ready. Amen. We need to be ready day and night so when He comes we can quickly open up and say, Welcome Jesus! Amen. Yeah. Just like we ought to have that kind of anticipation as we're waiting for Him. And we ought to be with patience. Oh, that's hard, isn't it? Oh, Romans 8.25 said, But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it means to look and wait for, looking for that which been promised and we're looking for it to come. But remember what Isaiah 64, 4 said, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. We are in anticipation. We are with patience waiting for that blessed hope to go to that place that we've read about and yet we cannot fully comprehend it. 
We cannot fully comprehend what is waiting for us on the other side. That's what Isaiah is saying there, isn't it? He said, only God knows what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Yeah, when he comes, he's ready to go. And we better be ready to go. But how long are we to wait on the Lord? How long should we be waiting? You know, people say, well, how long should I wait for him before I pull off and leave him? You know, well, Job said in 1414, he'd wait until his change came. He's going to wait his entire life. He's going to wait till the resurrection day when his change would take place and he'd have a body that would not have boils. He would have a body that would not know financial problems anymore. He'd have a body that did not grieve over children and, and those that had passed on before. He'd have a brand new body likened unto his blessed Lord's body. So I'll just wait. We need to be waiting on the Lord until our change comes. The psalmist said in 25.5, he said, Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. He said, I want to be led by you. If we would be led by the Holy Spirit every day of our life, and we would listen to him, our lives would be so much better, wouldn't it? It really would. Instead of getting in a hurry, but then Hosea put it this way in chapter 12 and verse 6. He said, Therefore turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on thy God continually. So they're all saying the same thing, aren't they? Saying continually, all the day, until our change comes. We ought to be waiting on the Lord. You know why? Because God is waiting on us. The Bible says that in the days of Noah, He waited. God is still waiting today. I don't know what he's waiting for. I mean, Noah's time, they figured the earth had been here about 2,000 years. And the next 2,000 years, Jesus came on the scene. And now we're around that next 2,000 year, and I don't know. But I do know this, that when he comes, he's waiting for some reason, and it might be for you to get right with God. It may be for you, the prodigal, to come home. That might be what he's waiting for. I don't know. But we ought to continue every day always looking and waiting for the Lord. But let me just tell you, last of all, there are some benefits to waiting. Yeah. The psalmist said in 33.20, Our soul waiteth for the Lord. And here's the benefit. He is our help and our shield. He's our help. He's our shield. They fought a lot of physical battles. You and I, we know today that it is not a flesh and blood battle that we fight, but it's a powers of unseen powers and principalities that we fight. But he said that God there was his help and he was his shield. And God has given to us the shield of faith. The old Greeks, I believe it was, I learned this in high school in history. I think it was. But they had large shields in that day. They could stand behind their shield and not be seen. They were large. And they said that every time that a soldier went off to war, his mother would pull him up tight and hug him, kiss him on the cheek and whisper in his ear, Son, come home with your shield or come home on your shield. They would carry dead soldiers off in their shield. But if he came home and he wasn't dead and he didn't have a shield, it said that it meant to them that he had abandoned the army. He had went AWOL. He had thrown it down and said, I quit. So mama would say, come home with your shield or on your shield. Our shield is faith. We will either go home with our shield or on our shield. Amen. Amen. And so we need to do that. And so he said, he's my shield. He's, uh, and the word there means to adhere to, to await long. To wait long. Yeah. He said, our help. That's why he said, our soul waiteth. It's waited a long time. Down in Babylon, it was 70 years they waited. And then some of them didn't want to go back home. They got used to babbling. Yeah. 
It's like the, their forefathers. They left Egypt, but their hearts never left Egypt. And they died in the wilderness. But the benefit is that God will be our helper and He'll be our shield. But we'll inherit the earth as well in Psalm 37, 9. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. God, Jesus talked about that, didn't He? The meek shall inherit the earth. See, God's going to redo this thing and you and I are going to be there to help rule things. Amen. He's got a job for us to do. Amen. And he said that those that wait on the Lord, they're the ones who will inherit the earth. But then there's salvation as well. In Psalm 62, beginning of verse 1, said, Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From Him cometh my salvation. And there, that word they tell me means stillness, quiet, trust. Yeah. From Him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Why? He said, because He steals me. He quiets me. And I can trust Him. That's the benefit of waiting upon the Lord. I said earlier, we're all a little impatient at times, are we not? But I think we need to stay ready and watching for Christ to return. Or... Wait on Christ to answer your prayer or whatever it is. Let me just give you quickly and I'm done. People in the Bible who got in a hurry. Abraham waited 10 years for God to fulfill his promise to give him a son. And he got impatient, stepped out of the will of God, had a son, and God said, that's not the son. He had to wait another 15 years to get the one God promised. And now we're paying the price today for his, for his impatience. All that in the Middle East, that's coming out of family feud over there. Uh, they all trace back to Abraham. King Saul waited the seven days on Samuel. And he got afraid in the battle. And when Samuel didn't come, when he thought he should have been there on that seventh day, he took it upon him to be a priest and offer sacrifice. And he got scolded. And he lost the blessing from God and learned that obedience was better than sacrifice. The prodigal son, he couldn't wait. He wanted it now. And he wasted it all. Wasted every bit of it. Took what it is. He, I guess it was the forerunner of the commercials. You used to see it's my money and I want it now. He couldn't wait. It just was eating at him and he had to have it now. He could do it while he's young and he had nothing down the road because he squandered it all. There was a man that traveled with the great apostle Paul by the name of Demas. I guess he got tired of waiting for the Lord to return because Paul said, Demas has forsaken me. He's went back to the world. He's loved this world too much. Sad, isn't it? Got impatient. All of heaven could be his. All the promises of God. But he said, hey, I want something now. Why do we trade the temporal, the eternal, for the temporal? It's what we do when we say no to God and we say, I'll take it now instead of having that which will, that rust cannot destroy and moth cannot eat. Amen. And no thief can ever, bring, uh, can ever steal it. So let us wait upon the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight for the lessons that we've learned here that we need to be waiting upon you. We get in a hurry. We want to see things happen now. We want to see it happen quickly. Father, but we know that we wait upon you, we can renew our strength. And Father, if we take our time, we're, we don't get ahead of you. Father, we don't blunder things. I pray that you'd help us. I pray, Father, if someone needs to be saved, they'll be saved today. And Father, trade this temporal for the eternal riches that lie up beyond this grave. And Father, that every prodigal would come home, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.